I am going to solve a bunch of Gauss's law problems. Um, so I'm going to start here. This is the ga this is finding using Gauss's law to find the electric field due to a solid sphere. Let me explain Gauss's law really briefly. Um, it's kind of complicated, really, and I think a lot of times it's introduced in a in too early uh, because it really deals with electric field and uh, and flux. So what's flux? Well, the electric flux is uh, the surface is the integral over an area of electric field, and and I like to think about like rain flux. May, suppose I had a sheet like this. It's tilted a little bit, and it's raining. Rain's coming down. So the question is, how much rain hits that hits that sheet of paper? And we could call that the rain flux. I'll call that flux R. It would depend on the rain rate, the area, and theta. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and actually, we, we'd really say cosine theta, where the theta is the angle between the rain and the normal to the area. And that's the the rain flux. So I could increase the rain rate, I could increase the size of the area, or I could make the this, you know, hit the the paper more perpendicular and I'd get more rain flux. And so the same same thing's true with the electric field flux. We can do calculate the flux from electric field, uh, except it's not rain and you don't get wet. So it turns out that if I pick a closed surface, any imaginary closed surface, and I calculate the total electric flux through that surface, which would be this integral right here. This is a, well, this is the, not a closed integral. If I do a closed, it has to be a closed surface. So usually we'll see this circle right there. That means a closed surface area, area integral. So we're integrating over a surface, but it has to be a complete surface, like a sphere or a cube, but not just a plain sheet. You can't do a sheet, right? And if I take the electric field dot n hat, n hat is a unit vector perpendicular to the area, and dA is each piece of area, and if I do that, I get the total flux. And Gauss's law says this, the total flux for any surface is equal to the total charge inside of that divided by epsilon naught. So this is do a really quick example. Uh, suppose I have a positive charge and a negative charge. And now if I draw some imaginary surface, it doesn't have to be real like that. And I look at the electric field, so I know the electric field uh, is going to be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. I'm, I'm just guessing here. So there's the electric field along that that little weird shape I drew. If I were able to, and I can't, but if I were able to actually take n hat dot da for each little piece on here and I and I integrate it over that surface area I would find that the flux for this is equal to zero because there's just as much negative flux right here this is negative flux is going into the surface as there is positive flux going out and notice that that's Q in. If I have this as plus Q and minus Q, the total charge inside is zero. So the flux is zero. Now, what if I were to take this as my surface? Then I would have a positive flux. I couldn't calculate it. I couldn't calculate it because, again, I have these really weird surfaces over here. But now I have, you know, something like this. And I would get a flux that's equal to the total charge inside divided by epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is a constant. Okay, so in a lot of cases, it's a really great relationship between the charge and this idea of flux, and we can use it to our advantage in certain situations where we can make super simple integrals, and that's that's what we're going to do. So here I have a sphere of radius r and a total charge q, and I want to find the electric field both outside over here and inside. So let me start on a new piece of paper. Uh, the key to Gauss's law is to make it as simple as possible so that you don't even have to integrate. So let me draw my sphere like that. Now the first thing I need to do is to make some assumptions about the, the shape of the electric field. Since this is a spherical sphere, a non-spherical sphere would be weird, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to, I think that the electric field is always pointing outward. And 
I think no matter where it is. And I think the magnitude electric field is proportional to is the same for every as long as it's the same distance away from the origin. Okay, so I have to make those two assumptions. I've assumed two things about the electric field, but now I can use Gauss's law. So if that's true, and I pick this, let's pick a surface inside of here. It's another sphere, and it has a radius of r. If I were to draw the electric field on the surface of that Gaussian sphere, it's not a real thing, then the magnitude of that electric field's constant, I'm assuming, and the direction's always perpendicular to the surface. So if I draw all my n hats, n hat, n hat, n hat, n hat, n, do I have to draw them all? I'm going, well, I guess I'm going to now. Then e dot n hat equals the magnitude of e. They're all in the same direction. I don't have to worry about the dot product, right? They're all, I don't even care that it changes. It's the same. So now, I, and the magnitude of that's constant. So the flux around that closed surface is going to be equal to the e dot n hat dA. Well, e is constant and n hat and e are in the same direction. So that becomes a constant that I can bring out front and I get e integral of dA. So that means I just have to integrate over the area of this sphere and that's just the area of a sphere. So this is going to be equal to e, the area of a sphere is four pi r squared. Remember the radius of my little sphere is r squared. So that's my flux. I, I, I did, I picked such an easy shape that I could do the integral without even having to do the integral. And that's the key. We, if you want to do Gauss's law, you can only do it for these certain situations. It's kind of like a trick and that's why I don't like it. Um, I mean, it's still cool, but it's better to actually get some situations where you actually do the, the integral, but let's just, that's fine. So that's going to be equal to, that's the flux, it's going to be equal to the total charge in, I'll just put it as qn divided by epsilon naught. Now, what's the charge inside of here? I doesn't, it doesn't matter about the charge outside, it only matters about this charge in here. This charge actually doesn't do anything, which is kind of weird, okay? Uh, but if you think about this charge out here, it actually would cancel itself because it's evenly distributed. So I need to find that charge in there. Let's say that, again, the charge density, I'm going to find the charge density as the total charge divided by the volume. It's like mass density, but it's charge density. If I assume the charge density is constant, then this is going to be equal to, I said the total charge on the sphere is Q divided by the volume of the whole sphere, which is 4 thirds pi big R cubed. That's the volume of the sphere. Now I'm going to assume the charge density of my stuff inside here is also the same. So that's going to be Qn over 4 thirds, thirds pi little r cubed. So I can solve for Qn. Qn is going to be equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed big Q divided by, that's a third, 4 thirds pi big r cubed. Those cancel and I get r cubed Q over r cubed. And I said r cubed, but I meant r cubed. And see that I say capital r cubed, but it sounds the same. Okay, that's just a joke. So I can put that in up here and I get, putting this all together, I have e four pi r squared equals uh, q r cubed over epsilon naught r cubed. Now I am going to solve for e. So I'm gonna divide both sides by this and I get e equals q r cubed over four pi r squared epsilon naught r cubed. That cancels with that and I get q over four pi epsilon naught r cubed r. That's for inside this, the inside the sphere. Um, and I'm gonna plot that in a second, e in. Now you can check that it actually has the same units as electric field due to point charge, which is charge over four pi, or four, charge over epsilon naught r to the distance squared, which I have distance over distance cubed. It is, so that's good. 
Okay, also we should check, if I'm right at the center of this, if r equals zero, I should have a zero electric field. And so if I put r equals zero, I get a zero electric field. Yay. Okay, let's do outside the sphere. So here, let's draw my sphere again. And now I'm going to pick a Gaussian sphere outside of radius r. And again, the electric field, uh, the, it's the same uh, integral, the flux is equal to e dot n hat dA, and again, e and n hat are in the same direction, and e is constant, so this is going to be e times the integral of dA, which is just the area, so the flux is going to be e times 4 pi r squared, and that's going to be equal to qn over epsilon naught. Now, in this case, qn is just q, right? And it doesn't matter how big my sphere gets, I don't get any more charge in there. So this is just going to be big Q over epsilon naught. If I solve for E, I get E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. And now that's the magnitude of the electric field. That's not the electric field, right? I've already had to pick the direction. So I'm not finding the electric field. I'm finding the magnitude of the electric field. And this is the magnitude of the electric field due to a point charge. So outside of this sphere, it looks just like a point charge. Uh, so that's out. Let's write down in n equals q over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed r. So at r equals r, which one should I use right on the surface? Should I use this one or that one? It should be the same, right? If I put in r equals capital R here, that's just an r squared. If I do the same thing over here, I get capital R over capital R cubed, I get the same thing. So if you were to graph this, it looks like this. E as a function of r, it goes out at linear, and then it decays uh, 1 over r squared, and this is at r, the end. OK, do you want me to do another one? I'll do another one. Um, again, I, I think that a lot of times people do Gauss's Law way too early. So I'll do another one. I'm not going to give as much of an introduction to Gauss's Law. I'm just going to jump in and do it, but I'll do that right now. It'll be another video. So goodbye. You can leave now.